Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Boa constrictors and ball pythons are the two most popular pet snakes available today. If you're getting into keeping snakes as pets, it can be somewhat daunting choosing between the two. Today I'm going to review the different characteristics and pros and cons of both ball pythons and boa constrictors, including things like temperament, ease of husbandry and breeding, and other characteristics that contribute to their overall suitability as a pet. In each category, I'm going to award a winner, either the ball python or the boa constrictor. So if you're having trouble choosing, stay tuned and hopefully this video will make the choice a little bit easier. This video is not about which is the best pet snake, but rather which is the best pet snake for you. Because both boa constrictors and ball pythons can make excellent snake pets, albeit with different characteristics. So the best snake pet for you depends on exactly what you're looking for. One more comment before we get into the countdown. Both boa constrictors and ball pythons can make excellent first snakes. So it's often thought that boa constrictors are somewhat more of an advanced snake and that somebody should have experience with other species before getting into boa constrictors. But if you research the husbandry and provide the proper requirements for your snake, that's really not the case. Another misconception is that boa constrictors are giants, but the sizes are often grossly exaggerated. The truth is the average adult boa constrictor is somewhere in the six to eight foot range. And there are quite a few different dwarf forms like this crawl key boa. This is an adult male who's only about four feet long and will get no bigger than this. So don't let the size alone determine your choice because there are many smaller boa constrictors available for the pet keeper. Okay, so now to the countdown. The first trait I'm gonna look at is the temperament and docility of boa constrictors and ball pythons. And this is a very important characteristic for many beginners because they want an animal that's not gonna bite them. And so I'll say that both boa constrictors and ball pythons are generally docile and very handleable and will not bite aggressively. However, both ball pythons and boa constrictors are able to bite. And I'll say overall, you're more likely to be bitten by a boa constrictor than by a ball python. They tend to be a little less aggressive and they'll more roll into a ball in defense. So in this category, I award the ball python as the winner for temperament and docility. The next characteristic is personality. So how much will your pet snake interact with you? How much will it show off interesting behaviors that are fascinating for the pet keeper? Well, in this category, ball pythons in general don't move around very much. In fact, they're often referred to affectionately as pet rocks. And this reflects their uh, natural history where they live in underground burrows in Africa and they don't really move around all that much. In contrast, boa constrictors tend to be a lot more active. They climb uh, in the wild, they'll often live in trees, and in general, they'll interact more with the handler and the pet owner. So as far as personality and um, behavior, I have to award this round to the boa constrictor. So we have one round ball python, one round boa constrictor. Next, I'm going to explore the husbandry requirements of the two species. And the first criteria is the ease of housing. With ball pythons, they're ideally suited to being kept in rack systems. And this mimics their natural habitat of living in underground burrows. Because they're not very active, you can keep a ball python in a smaller space. And also because their adult size is smaller at three to five feet in length, they don't need as large of a enclosure. Boa constrictors, on the other hand, will reach anywhere from four to 10 feet in length. So while you can keep smaller forms like this dwarf crawl key boa in a rack system, with adults, you really wanna put them in a four to eight foot snake cage or similar type of enclosure. So as far as ease of housing, the ball python is the winner. Also important in husbandry is feeding. And so the next criteria is the ease of feeding. So ball pythons are notorious for refusing food. Often they'll eat fine for a while and then they'll just go off food for no apparent reason. In some cases they can go for over a year without eating. And this is just the captive bred ones which are more accustomed to captivity. If you're talking about a wild caught ball python, there are accounts of them going well over a year without feeding and being very difficult to get established to feeding. 
Boa constrictors, on the other hand, rarely refuse food. And they're not picky at all as far as the types of food that they'll eat. And it's very unusual to have an issue with a boa constrictor not wanting to eat. So for, as far as ease of feeding, the boa constrictor is the clear winner. So that's two rounds for the ball python, two rounds for the boa constrictor. The next category is admittedly subjective, but I think there is a clear winner. And that's the category of physical appearance and beauty between the ball python and the boa constrictor. And for this comparison, I'm not going to refer to any of the selectively bred morphs that vary in color and pattern. I'm just going to refer to the wild type or naturally occurring form of the ball python and the boa constrictor. So the ball python in general is a very short, somewhat fat and rotund snake. They have a very round cross section and they have a rather unusual and goofy appearance. If you look at the head shape in particular, they often will have this kind of protruding front part of their head, which gives them almost a duck-like appearance. So it's a rather comical and somewhat goofy appearing animal. In contrast, the boa constrictor has a much more graceful and muscular appearance. So looking at this Peruvian red tail, you can see how muscular the body is. They have a much more square in cross-section body shape. Uh, they're much more muscular overall. And then looking at the head shape, they have a much more graceful and beautiful head shape. Boa constrictors in general have this wedge-shaped, kind of pointy head shape, tapering to a point uh, where the snout is. And the true red tail boas may have the most pronounced wedge-shaped heads. They also have these very beautiful head markings. So although it is subjective, for me, hands down, the boa constrictor is the winner in the looks and appearance category. So that's three wins for the boa constrictor, two wins for the ball python. The next criteria I'm going to refer to refer to the diversity of different types of animals available for both pet ball pythons and boa constrictors. And there's really two types of diversity I'm referring to. The first are the number of morphs, and if you're new to reptile breeding, morphs are selectively bred animals that differ in terms of either color, pattern, or both, compared to the wild occurring, you know, the naturally occurring types of snakes. And so ball pythons are, have more morphs than any other type of reptile that's bred in captivity. On Morph Market, which is the leading internet classified site for reptiles, there are somewhere around 200 different morph genes, and these can uh, control a variety of different characteristics, including different colors, different patterns on the ball python, and even things like whether the ball python has scales or not. So you can combine these roughly 200 different genes together in numerous different ways, and if you're talking about an animal that has two, three, four, or even more genes, there's literally billions and billions of different combinations of possible morph ball pythons that you could breed. Boa constrictors, on the other hand, also have a lot of different morphs, not quite as many as the ball python. On morph market, there's around 50 or so different morph genes. One of my favorite is this VPI T positive or caramel albino boa. So there's clearly fewer morph genes, although there's still a huge variety, and I don't think anybody that wants to breed morphs would be uh, run out of possibilities with the boa constrictor. And again, you can combine these morph genes together in numerous different ways when you put two, three, or more genes into the same animal. So as far as the diversity of morphs, I'm going to narrowly award the win to the ball python. So that's three rounds for the ball python, three wins for the boa constrictor. When we talk about diversity, we also have to consider the availability of locality specific animals. And by this, I mean animals that are descended from animals that were collected at known localities in the wild, and they're kept true to their wild type appearance specific to that locality. When you look at the range of the boa constrictor, it's a huge area all the way from northern Mexico down to northern Argentina. So we have a millions and millions of square miles of habitat, and it's not surprising that the boa constrictors have evolved into a wide range of different phenotypes.
there are at least several dozen different localities of boas that people are breeding in captivity and they're keeping them true to that wild locality. So for example, this is a Peregrinera Peninsula boa from Venezuela. And this is a very unusual animal in that it's a dwarf form. This is a female who is approaching her adult size. This is a naturally occurring anorthristic variant, meaning it doesn't have any red or uh, yellow pigment. This type of locality boa is specific to the, that small peninsula in northwestern Venezuela. The availability of all these different locality boas is the perfect lesson in evolution. And as a biologist who's been fascinated with evolution his whole life, the, pres the availability of the localities makes boa constrictors a clear winner to me as far as a pet snake. And I have to strongly give the award to this round to the boa constrictor. There are a few locality ball pythons available but there's not many people that are working with them with the emphasis largely on the morph breeding for ball pythons. So I'm gonna give the win in this category to the boa constrictor. So that's four wins for the boa constrictor, three wins for the ball python. Next, I wanna talk about breeding both ball pythons and boa constrictors. So the ease of breeding is obviously a pro since a lot of people that get into reptiles end up wanting to breed them. And so with ball pythons, you can reach breeding size typically within two to three years. Often males will breed as young as a year old. On the other hand, boa constrictors take a lot longer to grow to breeding size and usually require four to six years to reach maturity for in breeding, although some males can reach maturity in as little as two to three years. In addition, boa constrictors are in general a lot harder to breed than ball pythons. Ball pythons are a lot more formulaic. If you just follow a simple recipe, putting a male and female together, you're likely to be successful breeding. On the other hand, boa constrictors don't follow a simple recipe and you can do everything right and not be successful. What works perfectly for one person or one pair of boa constrictors may not work for another person or another pair of boa constrictors. And often there's no rhyme or reason. So as far as breeding ease, the ball python is the winner. So that's four rounds for ball python, four rounds for boa constrictor. One other characteristic with breeding is egg laying versus live bearing. And this is where boa constrictors and ball pythons differ considerably. The ball python lays eggs, whereas boa constrictors retained their fertilized eggs within them to develop further and give live birth. So you might be tempted to say, well, boa constrictors are easier because you don't need to worry about incubating the eggs. However, the egg laying of the ball python actually makes it the easier species to breed. And it's because the females are involved in their reproductive cycle for a shorter period of time to laying the eggs. Once the eggs are laid, it's very easy to have complete control over their incubation, temperature, and other conditions. Boa constrictors, because they retain their fertilized eggs within them, require a lot longer for the female to get successfully give birth. So it's a lot more of a commitment in terms of the time for a female boa constrictor, and there's a lot more that's out of your hands. You know, things can go wrong with the female when she's gravid and has the babies developing in her, which can lead to the deaths of the babies, resulting in a stillborn litter because ball pythons can go from breeding to laying their eggs a lot faster and then recover for the next round of breeding than a boa constrictor, typically you can breed a ball python female every year, whereas with a boa constrictor, the females need a year off to recover in between breeding because they've in invested so much of their year in that breeding cycle and it takes them the whole next year to get them back up to condition to breed. So in terms of the egg laying of the ball python versus the live bearing of the boa constrictor, I'm going to award the win to the ball python, which gives us five wins for the ball python to four wins for the boa constrictor. So now that we've successfully reproduced our ball pythons and boa constrictors, this takes us to the last category since we'll have to find homes for the babies. And that is the investment potential and demand. With ball pythons, Different morphs will commonly start out in the many thousands of dollar price range and then rapidly drop in value as they become more available. It's the classic supply and demand economics. 
In fact, there are some morphs that go from over $10,000 to just a few hundred dollars in price within just a few years. And this has a lot to do with the larger number of people that are breeding ball pythons, the ease of breeding them, and the faster time frame to go to babies in a ball python breeding project. On the other hand, boa constrictors have far fewer people working with them, breeding them, because it takes longer and it's harder and it's more high risk. So as a result, boa prices are far more stable than ball python prices. Although the prices of morph boas do tend to drop over time, it's not nearly as fast as ball pythons. And in the last few years, there are even morphs which have been going up in value after they initially went down from their starting point. When we look at locality specific boas, on the other hand, the values of these animals have been increasing dramatically over the last decade or so. And this reflects the limited supply because there are fewer people working with them, it takes longer to breed them, and in general it's more difficult to have a successful breeding project. So if you can successfully breed locality specific boas, you should have no trouble finding homes for them because they're in high demand and it's definitely a seller's market versus with ball pythons, many of the common types, the market is saturated and it can be very difficult finding homes for them. So in terms of the demand and the investment potential, I'm going to say the boa constrictor is the clear winner. Having reached the end of this head-to-head -head comparison, the result is a tie with five wins apiece for the boa constrictor and the ball python. Your ultimate winner will depend on the characteristics that you find valuable in a pet snake. For me, you probably figured out by all the boa constrictors I've shown in this video what my choice is. And I work exclusively with locality specific and morph boa constrictors. I hope this video was helpful. As always, shoot me any questions you may have about snakes and I'll do my best to answer them. Please hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and enjoy your snakes.